Hey, girls. Hello, daddy. I love a daddy. <laughs> Once again, there's more drama. I know I, I'm always late to the drama, but we're here now. We're here now. So, we are going to do a Erica and Brittany timeline in this video. Because what... <laughs> I really want to swear this early in the video, but I cannot. So, um, cannot. Um, I, I did write a script out for this video. And in my intro, I literally put what the... <laughs> but then I was like, oh my God, I can't even swear this early in the video. Tommy drama has just finished. And Amberlynn has decided to distract everyone from the Tommy drama and has actually named her ex-girlfriend Valentine as a woman named Erica. Now, Erica and another lady called Brittany are both really pissed off about this because there was a hidden, there was like an agreement behind the scenes that Amberlynn would not name Erica. I found this like relationship breakdown online and it's really helpful. So we have Erica over here. Um, this is going from memory. I actually, I think I have it somewhere. Found it. Amberlynn, <laughs> Ambergeddon relationship breakdown. So we have Amberlynn and then next to her we have Erica, AKA Valentine. Now they apparently dated between February and June of 2024. However, I believe they were talking for a few months before then. Now Erica is actually married. And this woman, Brittany, or Brit, as I have mentioned two seconds ago, is Erica's wife. Erica is mask presenting, kind of looks like Buzz McCall McAllister from Home Alone, which is actually a fair representation because she does a little bit. Um, originally a hater or troll, converted to liking Anne Boleyn. Um, she brought Anne Boleyn the Lego gift set. And Jordy, Jody, sorry, Jordy went live with Erica. Like after all this drama happened, Jordy went live with Erica, and that's where like Erica spilled some of the tea. And then on the other side, we have Tommy, and then in brackets, Slommy Emily Willow, close brackets, dated June to July 2024. And then next to her is her super sized big beautiful woman I think that's what it stands for partner who passed in April what we know about Tommy is she is an active member of the feeder communities kind of looks like Zachary Michael her former partner was nearly 1000 pounds and passed in April um, apparently Tommy started talking to Amberlynn around this time she's a registered nurse and she visited Amberlynn in July and then at the very end, we have a box for Alexis because what the fuck are you doing here? And I really, really appreciated that like relationship breakdown. It really helps like visually see what the fuck is going on. Okay, so my add on to this relationship breakdown is Erica has come out and said that she works in a prison and Brittany has come out and said she is a therapist. Just keep that in mind as we unravel the rest of the drama. To add more background information, just so we can get the full picture, Brittany has also been an avid watcher of Amberlynn for a, a few years and also a part of the hater community. And we know this because she actually is in like the Facebook groups for Amberlynn Reed. If you didn't know, there's loads of Facebook groups for Amberlynn Reed. Um, and Brittany has been in one of these and she's been sharing posts, dating all the way back to 2020? 2020. 2020. One of her most recent posts was actually posted in April 2024. A few months ago. Her last post was a few months ago. Okay, this is all just to keep in the back of your mind while we talk about the rest of what's going on. Erica has also said to Amberlynn that she has always been a part of the hater community, okay? She has actually said to Amberlynn, hey, I didn't really like you, 
But now I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe. And this is actually confirmed in some voice notes from Erica herself. Now, to start this drama off, Erica had watched a Zachary Michael reaction video to some of Amberlynn's TikToks. Now, in these TikToks, Amberlynn was like sort of explaining what her like what her type in women are and she's very into like the mask sort of women and so on and so forth um erica had seen zachary's reaction to these tiktoks and she was a bit like oh oh mask presenting just like me for real and she decided for some reason okay she decided to turn to her wife of like seven or nine years something like that her wife of a very long time or sorry sorry they've been together for approximately seven years anyway i'm getting off topic already erica decided to share this information with her wife brit and together or maybe it was just brit's idea they decided to message amberlynn through erica's account and basically troll her from the very beginning. This whole thing started because a therapist turned to her wife and was like, hey, message this girl and basically troll her even though we hate her and we know she's mentally unstable. Okay? I, I would dump my therapist if I found out they, they did that shit. Now, to jump out of sequence just a little bit, back in maybe November, at the back in the end of 2023, it was rumored that Brit had actually messaged Zachary Michael and basically said that along the lines of, Amberlynn is having an affair with my wife. I think she just wanted to spill the tea from the beginning. This wasn't seen by Zachary Michael at the time, I don't think. I can't speak of him, obviously. And I'm not that surprised that he hadn't seen it or responded because I'm sure being quite a popular reaction channel within the community, I'm sure he gets stuff like this like all the time. So I'm not surprised that he didn't bring it up whatsoever because you don't, you don't have any proof you know, it's just another he said, she said sort of thing. There's also been a anonymous post floating around in some of the Facebook groups. Now this post says something like, I have a secret about Anne Boleyn. I know she's dating, Ma I'm sorry, I kicked my camera. I know she's dating a married woman named Danielle, but someone needs to pay me money to find out the details. And, you know, being in this community, like, no, no, no one's going to pay you money to find out information about Amberlynn Reed and her life. Like, we are invested, but not money invested, you know? So obviously a lot of people thought this post was either a fake or a troll because like there was no information and they wanted to be paid for it. So it's like okay, you just want money to like spread potential rumors or lies. However, it's a bit uncertain now because there's voice notes relate, re released further down the storyline. And I think it's, it's either Erica or Britt that they actually mention Anne Boleyn was to also talking to a married woman named Danielle. Now, I don't know if that is true I can't find if Amberlynn has actually said that this is true or not. Um, but again, it still could be a lie because they might have already seen the anonymous post talking about Danielle and they might have just thought, I oh, will just throw it in there to make it all seem real, you know? So it's a bit like, uh, hit and miss. We don't know. Now jumping back into sequence, Erica claims to have told Anne Boleyn from the very beginning that she was a hater of Anne Boleyn and she was an active part of the hater community, but she saw how Anne Boleyn would act with wifey 
her ex. And I think that had, that like changed Erica's heart and was like, oh my God, Anne Boleyn is so perfect and beautiful. I'm not sure how, (laughs) I'm not sure how. Erica also claims that she had told Anne Boleyn from the very beginning that she is in fact married. However, she told Anne Boleyn that she's only married for financial reasons and that Brit, the wife, does live with her own partner and that they have an open relationship, basically. What does confuse me about this is that they, they're they saying they have an open relationship, but they are married for financial reasons, but Brit is living with her other partner. Now, obviously, I'm not American. Um, I, th- I think when you actually get married, you get a tax write-off or something. I don't know. Um, so I'm just a bit confused why they would be married for financial purposes but don't live together. Do you, you know what I mean? Like, if if their financial stuff isn't tied, like they don't have a, a house to pay for, bills to pay for together, a car together, then I'm a bit confused why she would say that they're married for financial reasons. Yeah? <laughs> Obviously, uh, fill me in in the comments below because it's like, I'm not that knowledgeable about America. Everything I get from America is from Amberlynn Reed. Okay? I have no clue, okay? I just live in my own little bubble and talk about Amberlynn. Erica claims that Amberlynn was also talking to married women online or actually unsure if they were married or not but she claims that Amberlynn was talking to women online which you know whatever Amberlynn at the minute is single in the at the minute of this story she's single you know her and Erica aren't official in a monogamous relationship yet so it's like okay I guess Amberlynn is talking to girls like go ahead boo um but unsure if these people were married however the name Danielle was throughout into the abyss again And finally, Brit turned to Erica and was like, stop talking to Amberlynn. Stop. Stop. Stop talking to Amberlynn. Like, eventually, she said that. And Erica says she did stop for a little bit. But um, decided to message her again. And I'm, I'm just questioning, like, why? Why? Why message Amberlynn? Like... Why continue the conversation? I, that bit I am confused about, but obviously I can't read Erica's mind, you know? So, enjoy, I guess. Apparently, Amberlynn was very possessive over Erica, and according to Erica herself, their relationship was a forced agreement over text. They solidified their relationship on Valentine's Day, which is why Erica is nicknamed Valentine. Like, you know, they had all these crushes leading up to February. So they were talking for a few months before that. Unsure when. I'm sure other people have said when and all that stuff. Okay, thank you. Soon after their relationship became official, Erica started to say started to have feelings for Anne Boleyn, which I'm, again, a bit confused about. Why would you agree to be in a relationship with someone that you don't have feelings for? Like, I am unsure, but maybe the feelings just developed a bit more and became a bit more deeper. I'm really unsure how Erica started to have deeper feelings for her and claims things got out of control. Like, I'm not sure Anne Boleyn can pretend to be that much of a nicer person than she portrays online. I don't think she can manipulate people that well, apart from like her weird Alexis friend who apparently Anne Boleyn then bitches about behind her back, but that's according to Erica. And it's like, it. a lot of this shit is he said, she said, or, or shall we say she said, she said, she said, she said. So we don't know the actual full truth. like. The saying goes is it's your story, their story and the truth. And we don't know. We don't know what the truth is. 
But cutting back to Alexis or Lex, that's a whole nother story that's going on now. There's like three lots of dramas going on. Like, who can keep up? Who can keep up? Britt and Erica had something called Life 360, which is like a tracking app. So you can see like where people are going by their location and so on. Now, apparently Erica told Amber Lynn that her and her wife did have this app and Anne Boleyn was like, I want to be on it. Oh my God, let me be on it. So she, apparently Anne Boleyn basically forced Erica to add her on Life 360. And then every time Erica would go outside, Anne Boleyn would bombard a text and be like, bitch, where the fuck are you going? Are you going to see your wife? I can't believe it. But then according to Anne Boleyn's side of the story, Erica was the one being possessive over Anne Boleyn's location. Although, does girl leave the house that often? Probably not. I would guarantee Erica leaves the house more than Amber Lynn would ever. Britney has been trying to contact a lot of reaction channels ever since like this all started. Even before, like she tried to contact Zachary Michael and obviously not a lot of people were listening. I think it was Salty Crab who was was the first one to actually listen to their side of the story and this is what sort of blew it out and out into the open although erica and Brittany actually contacted apathetic facts for some reason i struggle so much saying that <laughs> youtube channel they contacted af and sent them shit loads of voice notes like it was so long and there was so much to the story that like you just can't wrap your head around it and i think that's what everyone has been struggling with all this drama is that we learn something new and then the next day there's like five new things and then we've got to process all them and try understand it and fit it into the timeline and then the next day there's 10 new things and it's like my brain hurts i'm overwhelmed i'm overstimulated and I think that pushed everyone to the point of being like, you know what, I don't even care anymore. All this drama happened. We've all wanted side characters for ages. And then we've got three new people all in our faces trying to understand. And then they're all trying to get their 15 minutes of fame. So it's just like exhausting. During the voice notes that Erica had sent to AF, she, she said a lot of the times, don't involve my wife don't include my wife. She had nothing to do with this. Let's jump back to the beginning of the story. Though Erica and Brittany were the ones that said, oh, hey, let's message Amberlynn together and basically troll her. How are we going to exclude one of the persons that started the whole thing? That's just not how the world works. And by the way, links to some of the videos that I mentioned in the description below. And I appreciate all the other reaction channels for doing the Lord's work and like compiling everything quicker than I can because it's just too much for me. I'll be honest, it's just too much for my little brain and I can't keep up. So I appreciate all the other reaction channels for doing the Lord's work and helping us understand this shitty situation. And also a quick side note, I actually believe Brittany knew about the whole relationship from the beginning like she knew it but she knew it from the beginning for sure but then she told erica to stop talking to her but then obviously erica continued talking to her quote unquote behind britney's back however i don't think so i don't think britney i i think britney knew about everything like come on be for real how are you gonna tell your girlfriend to be like sorry how are you going to tell your wife to be like, oh my God, go talk to Amber Lynn Reed and flirt with her and then turn around and go, uh, excuse me, can you fucking stop that? And then not expect it to continue? I mean, sure. Okay, okay, okay. She probably trusted her wife a lot in that situation. However, Brittany was the one who said, actually, it might have been Amber Lynn Reed. Brittany or Amber Lynn Reed were one of the people to say that Erica is actually a serial cheater. So how the fuck is Brittany going to expect Erica to stop cheating on Amberlynn when she's cheated multiple times before? 
not to stop cheating on Britney, <laughs> not Anne Boleyn. <laughs> anyway, that's just literally my thoughts. Like, girl, come on. In June of this year, Erica tried to stop talking to Anne Boleyn. Although I'm, I'm not sure how difficult that must have been. Like, for real, all you need to do is block all of Anne Boleyn's socials block any type of contact that even sounds like her because Anne Boleyn apparently contacted uh, contacted Erica from a different number and was like oh my god I miss you I love you I want you back me 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 um and then why why would you read that and then be like oh oh my god that's a complete stranger no bitch it's literally Anne Boleyn Reed girl all you need to do is block her it's not like she's gonna come flying over to fucking find you like she barely walks to the shop like come on i did listen to all of the voice notes and apparently in my own notes i've put the rest of the voice notes aren't that important although she keeps repeating to leave her wife leave her wife out of this even though, once again, Brit began the whole thing besides, alongside Erica. How are we to keep the instigator out of the situation? Question mark. So, <laughs> I will have a listen through to the voice notes again. And I will include any of information here that I find useful. But apparently, when I first listened, listened to it, I was like, eh, meh. It's not that important. It's just like... Blah, 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 blah. I fell for Anne Boleyn. I spent hundreds on her, on Lego and other gifts. And blah, 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 blah. So now it's Britney's turn to send voice notes to AF. And she explains she thought Erica wasn't talking to Anne Boleyn anymore until she got suspicious of the way Erica would act on her phone like hiding shit and just her phone blowing up constantly from Amberlynn's messages. And then apparently Brit called Amberlynn on the phone to ask her what the fuck was going on, who messaged who, blah, blah, blah. Amberlynn started crying and I think this is the time that Amberlynn went to that party or a barbecue and then she shared screenshots recently about the conversation that she had with Alexis about Erica's wife calling her I'm so sorry there's like so many names throwing out at you like you get you get who's who right Anne Boleyn is Anne Boleyn Erica is Valentine Brittany is Erica's wife Alexis is Anne Boleyn's friend Zachary Michael is a reaction channel apathetic facts is AF I will call them AF. I am so sorry. You you know. You know. You know the names. You know the girls. Like, this is why you're watching this video. You know. You know. So, further down the line, Brittany and Erica decided to call Amberlynn and actually record their conversation. Brittany was more or less asking why Amberlynn reached out to Erica once again and apparently Amberlynn wanted to say her final goodbyes to Erica and their relationship. During this whole situation type of deal, Erica is sort of like whispering to Brittany, a little bit like a toddler. She's definitely giving me toddler Lynn vibes. Like, Erica's having a good conversation over there with Amberlynn on the phone. And Erica... Did I just say Erica or did I say Brittany? Brittany's over there having a conversation with Amber on the phone. And Erica's here go recording it. And she's like, but she didn't say that. But, but she didn't say that. She, she's ruined it. She's... Yeah, but she didn't say that. She's, she was mean. She was mean to me. And she made me spend money on her. Even though it was my choice to spend money on her. You know what I mean? If you've heard it, you know. But it was just very much like, girl, stand up for yourself. What the fuck? This is the confirmation that we get that Brittany has told Amberlynn 
not to mention their names on any YouTube or social media platforms. And Amberlynn is like, okay, girl, I got you. And now look where we are. Amberlynn decided to say Erica is Valentine because people started to speculate that Tommy and Valentine were the same person. Thank you to Mr. Snowflake or Mr. Cardigan for actually voicing this opinion and I think that's what started Amberlynn to be like, no, they are different people. We're gonna prove Mr. Snowflake wrong because we don't like him even though he's right in all his videos. From my opinion. <laughs> Towards the end of this recorded phone call, Brittany was giving me some very like young, dumb honey bun vibes. If you know who that is, you know what I mean. But Brittany was very much like, why would my wife want to leave someone who's successful, beautiful, and better looking than you? And it's like, bitch, <laughs> why don't you ask your wife what she's doing? Like, why? It just it irritates me that people go after the other person instead of the cheating partner. Excuse me? Like, turn to your wife and be like, bitch, what the fuck are you doing? This is over. Instead of turning to Amber Lynn and being like, oh my god, it's all your fault. Uh, yes, I am originally a hater. And that means I hate you more than my cheating wife, even though she spent hundreds of dollars on you. And it's... Uh, uh, ooh, uh, just direct your hate to the correct person. Whew. Personally, I think Amber Lynn handled that phone call as well as possible. Like, I don't think she argued or raised her voice once, which is quite surprising for Amber Lynn. Like, can you believe it? I'm quite surprised that she never even retaliated to Britney at once. Like, from what I recall, I don't think she did it once. Now is where we insert the Tommy timeline and the Tommy drama. So in Amberlynn's video addressing rumors, she mentioned that there's a rumor going around that Tommy might be married. But she said, she's not married. She's not the person to worry about being married. Something along those lines. Hinting that her ex-girlfriend, Valentine, was actually the married person, not Tommy. Now, the way she says it makes it sound like she didn't know at all that the partner was currently married, even though Erica then says, bitch, I told you from the beginning. This is where Mr. Snowflake inserts himself and what... And was like, um, he posted a video and he was a bit like, oh my God, are they the same person? And then Amberlynn was like, um, no, they're not. So she decided to post like proof that, um, Tommy and Erica are different people. Now, the, these this proof is just screenshots of text conversations between Amberlynn and Alexis. This is also when Brittany finds out that Amberlynn has obviously outed Erica and her name. And Brittany wants to insert herself into the drama and this is where she actually messages or speaks to Salty Crab, the reaction channel, and, you know, wants to tell their side of the story. Although Brittany has obviously been trying to spill this tea for quite some time. And now, and, and that, that's what sort of makes me think that she knew everything, you know? Like, I think she just knew about the whole relationship from start to end. Eventually, Brittany then goes live with the re other reaction channel called Oh Lordy It's Geordie. I just bit my tongue saying that, Jesus. And spill some more shit. I will link below all the other videos because I don't wanna watch it all, okay? I'll be honest, I'll, I'm being honest with you girls. I am enjoying some of the drama, but like, I don't wanna watch hours of it. You know what I mean? Like, like, ugh, I just, I just, I just don't have the time or the mental energy. 
Sorry, a little break time because my hair was pissing me off and the sun was beating down on me through the window. I never have my hair down for videos because I never have my hair down in general because it just pisses me off. From this point of the story, a lot of the audience is actually on Amberlynn's side and I can see where they're coming from because a therapist or she claimed to be a therapist, she then back backpedaled and said she works with recovering addicts or something like that. That I that is just verbatim. I am not 100% sure that she did say that. But these two people decided to troll Amberlynn from the very beginning and just be absolute assholes about it. And two thing two things can be true at once, like old girl says. I dislike Amberlynn Reed, but then also Bex and Erica are also shitty people. Like every everyone in this story is a shit person, including me and including you. <laughs> joking i love you for watching this video the most recent thing i have heard from this situation is britney is his little britney is asking amberlynn for twenty four hundred dollars and i don't know why like people are speculating because brit because erica was supposed to fly out to amberlynn on the first of august but that obviously didn't happen so did like Erica actually book flights and then also Erica spent a lot of her money on Amberlynn buying her Lego and gifts and stuff. So I think this is where the money is coming from, that figure. Brittany has sort of been threatening Amberlynn as well, like she threatens that she's going to expose her explicit pictures and I seriously don't, don't support any I seriously don't support any of that sort of behaviour, like it's really fucking wrong. I'm pretty sure it's illegal to obviously expose someone's nudes. And also, I don't think anyone wants to see Amberlynn's titty pics, like, I personally do not, like, keep that to yourself. And why are they saved? Why are they saved? Did you save them for like this moment? Hmm, does that mean Brittany was in on it all along? Hmm, questioning things now. So it seems like Erica and Brittany are trying to go back on their own words. Brittany is now claiming she is not a therapist and Erica is now trying to say she didn't have feelings for Amberlynn. Like, please make your mind up. I am getting whiplash. I'm not sure why you would like troll, why you would troll someone but still spend hundreds of pounds, hundreds of dollars on them. Like, I don't, like, me? Never. I would, mm, mm, won't catch me doing that shit. What? <sighs> mm. Did Erica actually buy them or was it Amberlynn pretending Erica bought them? I don't know. Is this whole drama fake? I don't know because the screenshots and the stuff line up with the timeline. However, screenshots can be faked, etc, etc. Side note, Amber uh, Amberlynn's friend Alexis or Lex has been involved during this whole fucking thing. She's like been in Geordie's comments of his live stream, asked to go live with him so she can share what she knows. And she's basically been sticking up for Amberlynn this whole fucking time. And she's just trying to insert herself into the whole fucking drama. And then recently, when I was like making notes and writing about this, <sighs> <laughs> Alexis has decided she doesn't want to be friends with Amberlynn anymore so literally one day she's like sub all supportive for her the next day she's like actually I don't want to be friends with Amberlynn at all and now and now now that I'm actually recording this she's trying she posted 
that she's made made a YouTube channel and she was like, leave your Q and A, leave your questions down below, and I'll do a Q and A on my on my YouTube channel. What? Now it's like, okay, Lex, what the fuck are you doing? Go away. <laughs> and is is this whole drama between Alexis and Amberlynn fake now? Because it's just getting so confusing. Lexis started, it's a whole nother video that we need to make. And we'll get into it properly there. Okay? Okay. Come back to my channel soon and, and we'll see me chat shit about it, okay? Cool. Time for my closing thoughts. This drama has been too fucking much. It's fucking funny because for years the Am Amberverse has been so boring. But then it's like, now we've all wanted side characters and now we've got like 700 overnight. And now it's just like too much. We can't, my, my personal brain is like too small to handle all this stuff. And it's like, can we just give us a minute to breathe? Like stop. I think that's why a lot of people are sort of over the drama already because there's just so much going on at once. Like it's just too hot to handle. Like it's overwhelming and then it's boring. But then I think also Brittany and Erica and Anne Boleyn all all felt felt like they were in a high school drama. Like it's just it's just ooh. It just felt very high school pathetic drama to me. Like they did this and then they did that and oh my god, do you know what I mean? It's just, phew. no. Here, here are some uh, other points that I made. Everyone in this drama is a shitty person. Anne Boleyn, because we all know about her and how awful she can be. Brittany claimed to be a therapist, but decided to troll a mentally unstable person that she already hated. Erica is apparently a serial cheater and can't stick to one simple story. And Lex is just annoying. I personally don't understand why Brittany and Erica still have a relationship. This has been questioned by Brit this has been questioned by people on Brittany's YouTube channel community post. So many words. But her replies are awful and telling commenters to focus on the bad people. She's one of them. <laughs> she is one of the bad people in this situation. Brittany and Erica are getting backlash from the whole thing. I think they're starting to lash out at others, calling them out on their shit. And I don't think this whole thing is the way they wanted it to go. I think they just wanted Anne Boleyn to get all of the shit, even though they came out with all their story. And it made both of them seem like also shitty people. Like, you cannot win in this situation. Brittany egged Erica on to message Anne Boleyn. Erica is a serial cheater, who clearly seems like a bad person, in my opinion. Like, you girls can't win from this situation. Finally, to end this saga, Anne Boleyn is dating Tommy aka Emily again which just pissed everyone off like are you fucking sick again again that is a whole other video to talk about but fuck you <laughs> fuck you for basically being like you guys caused us to break up you you don't want to see me happy to then fucking spin it on its head and be like we're dating again i'm so happy fuck off literally this is all oh, this would be like the end of amberlynn like bye 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 girl okay i hope this video has been enjoyable like the last one i i enjoyed some of the comments that i saw on the last one which i do appreciate very much i do actually read all my comments um i know these type of videos with me in it aren't that popular and i get it but i i enjoy it i'm i'm now wanting to do things on youtube that i actually enjoy and just have fun creating instead of feeling like it's a chore 
to create some of my videos. And hopefully that actually expresses my enjoyment in these videos. Even though, you know, the, the this one and the last one has been just me spouting shit. But to be, let's be honest, that's like basically my whole channel is me just talking shit. And I really appreciate you being there for me. Like, I love you so much. Like, you won't know. You don't know, girl. Mwah. Kisses to you. Anyway, I am sort of thinking about doing a deep dive into, like, this whole situation. I, I want to do that. I think that's something that I would enjoy doing. Um, so, you know, keep an eye out for that. I would like to talk about the Lex situation once that drama has died down. So yeah, I'm just sort of waiting for everything to calm down a little bit so then I can start picking it a, picking it apart bit by bit. So keep an eye out for them. Um, let me know down below what the fuck you think of this whole situation. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. It just feels like... It, it, people in this story, okay, are adults. Fully grown adults acting like teenagers, like even children like it's just a lot of he said she said blah 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 Whew. and now Amberlynn is living her best life with her feeding girlfriend who would probably encourage her to just get more fat so enjoy it Amberlynn okay we love that for you love that for you girl you did that you did that thank you so much and I'll see you soon bye for now <gasps> They gave me the wrong sandwich. Oh no. I'm really, really upset right now. And the Oscar goes to Amberlynn, the YouTuber. Oh, really? Like, I did that. I did that.